Arabian Travel Market. We're looking at loyalty programs. We're still talking sustainability. That's the theme of this show's Arabian Travel Market. Chris, nice to see you. Last time we met up was Global Hotel Alliance in Madrid. So what's been the biggest news since then? Well, when we were together in Madrid, of course, we announced the launch of NH Hotels. Since then, they fully integrated into the alliance. And um, believe it or not, only, what, nine, ten months later, they're actually one of our biggest contributors of cross-band revenue to the other brands, um, performing extremely well. So that's been a huge positive step forward for us. And, of course, an NH Hotel here in Dubai now. There is NH Collection on the Palm opened a few weeks ago. And we're always seeing some great performance uh, coming into that hotel. Yeah. So exciting to see them in the region for the first time. So since Madrid, what about uh, membership of the Your Loyalty program? How has that grown? Membership continues to grow massively. Um, we actually had growth last year, um, double what we'd had the previous year, which perhaps isn't too surprising as we're coming off the pandemic. But um, we've seen member numbers increase significantly, in particular our top tier elite members. Um, doubling revenues over the last uh, 12 months or so. And that's continued into 2023. So the first quarter, in fact, we just closed April um, with another record month. So it's really looking like on the back of leisure traveler, we're going to see continued growth into the summer. So we're feeling pretty positive okay, at the moment. And what about other hotels joining the Global Hotel Alliance for, in, in this year, for example? So we had uh, the set collection that joined in October, bringing in uh, some amazing assets like the Lutetia in Paris, Café Royal in London, uh, Conservatorium in Amsterdam, a Miller in Jerusalem. Wow. Um, so that was pretty exciting to bring such iconic properties in. Uh, we got more in the pipeline that we announced uh, quite soon. So we're pretty optimistic about growing. And we've added a lot of new hotels within our brands. You mentioned NH, but a lot of our brands are growing as well with new hotels. And the green collection I've been hearing whispers about, this is sustainability. So how does this fit into uh, sustainability and Global Hotel Alliance? Well, very much fits with the theme of ATM this year. Um, we launched this back in March uh, here in Dubai, actually, at Jay the Resort, which is, uh, we're on their stand here, but JA is one of the pioneers of uh, sustainability best practice here in the region. Where they're recycling water, their waste, and um, they're really doing a, an enormous amount um, for sustainability. What we wanted to do is reflect what our hotels are doing by um, showing those hotels off to, to our customers as the green collection, as we call it. We've got about 200 yeah. hotels. And basically, we determined that by whether they are adhering to best practice as determined by the UN sustainability goals, um, and that they're certified in doing that by one of the international organizations. Um, so we've chosen several of those international organizations, and if they're following those certification requirements, then we're bringing them into the green collection. So that's about 200 hotels out of the 800 that are currently in that collection. Okay. And that was very much a focus when we met up in Madrid with your uh, CEOs talking about their sustainability programs from the different hotels, which range, I think, with Hawaii right through to uh, uh, Asia itself. Well, I think um, you're seeing sustainability becoming a part almost of the DNA of many of our brands now. Um, we talked uh, a lot of the time, I think, uh, uh, Pan Pacific won an award um, for design, sustainability to design. Um, they've got a new hotel opening uh, next month, the Pan Pacific Orchard, which is almost looks like a uh, a self-sustained uh, jungle in the middle of oh, really? uh, in, in the middle of Orchard Road in in Singapore, Singapore yeah. and I, I think you're going to see more and more of um, sustainability come into design of new builds yeah. as well, and I I think that's what customers want to well, see. That's the only way, isn't it? Really, to get it in that design stage, otherwise, sort of retrofitting a hotel is going to be very expensive. Well, that's it. Is it expensive? But it, 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 the way in which we're seeing customer behaviour changing yeah. and going. Uh, choosing those sorts of hotels is really going to pay off over time, but also not, not not just because it's good from a customer perspective, but it's also the right thing to do. And we, we know we need to change um, our, our practices and behaviour in that regard. And customers will follow those that do. And to finish off day one, of course, uh, how's it been for you here? What's what, what's your feeling on the buzz? Well, it, it's a different buzz to last year. Last year was very busy, but it felt like people just wanted to get back together again. I think this year you feel people wanted to do business again. And there's a lot of talk about new projects. So much happening in the region, of course, um, not just here in Dubai, but in Saudi. Um, those projects are almost uh, <laughs> incessantly being announced, yeah, um, yeah. which is exciting. And I, I just feel that at the moment, the travel industry is on a high, obviously, after the lows of the pandemic. We are very optimistic about the rest of this year for the region, but for the broader um, international travel space. And who knows, 
can we sustain that into 2024 and beyond? Let's hope so. Let's hope so, yeah. So many thanks for joining us here at ATM and have a, have a good rest of the week. Thank you. Great to be here again. Thanks very much.